Hello, I'm Mixed Mars and Mar Man, and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be servicing a Mazport Lorma 22 inch, um, but I uh, have had come in because I sold one of my Atco Balmol 20 SKs to a gentleman up in Byfleet and um, hi Scott, how are you doing? And um, he chopped in two Mazports as part of a deal, and uh, one of the Mazports with a Briggs does have an issue, which I have all the parts for. Uh, but in this video, we're going to be servicing the Mazport 22 inch with uh, a Honda engine on top. I believe it's all up and running, uh, all works as it should do. But before I can sell it on, I must give it a service, make sure it is as it should be. So therefore, I don't have any comes back um, as and when I sell the machine on. So if you have a Mazport lawn mat and want to know how to service it, then this could be the video for you. If this is your first time watching Mixed Mars and Mar Man, hit the old subscribe button or whack the old bell and set all your preferences to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video and it is completely free to subscribe to my channel. So without further ado, let's get down on dirty and let's get this Mazport lawnmower up on the bench, get it serviced and get it advertised. Okie bidoki, let's, uh, let's go and have a look. Here's my little Honda, there she is. There's my little back. These mowers are sort of, it looks like the mowers are sort of creeping into the shed, doesn't it? Because, oh, service me, repair me. Um, so let's just get you set up where I want you. Mickey, what are you doing? Where are you going now? Don't stop meowing at me. I'm not feeding you. Um, right. So, um, we've got two mass ports, as I say. There's this one here. Now, this one does sound a little bit knocky. I don't think it's rod knock, but I have um, checked the oil level on it, and um, there's no ne next to no oil in it. Uh, it says, let's have a little look. Oh, I thought we did anyway. Oh, no, there's oil in it, beg your pardon. No, it's absolutely, it's absolutely bang on the mark. It said it, it said it was low oil reading, but I will just check that because um, this one's mucking about. And what it's doing is um, uh, it starts and runs, but when it gets a bit hot um, and you stop it, it doesn't like to restart or it will just cut out on you. And I suspect that to be coil. So what I'm going to do is, whilst I'm doing this video, uh, I'm just going to have this one in the background just so I can simulate it. So, let me just check that oil again. Make sure we know we're, we're, we're bang on for oil. That's good. Right, so, a uh, bit of that. Dead man, that's the a, that's a drive. Oh. Maybe the coil is now gone. Any, any, any fuel in the old cookie? Yeah, bit of fuel. So, I have had it running. Got a primer, HT's on here. I have had it running, but I think the call is now, is now actually done. Yeah, it's all working as it should do. I wonder if it is choking. Mmm, you're not a very well girl. I did know that when I, when I, when I did a part exchange. I, I was aware of that. But I believe it is a bit of cool. So I have had it running and um, it ran for about 20 minutes. And when I turned it off, it was a pig to start. When I did get it started, um, it cut out within three seconds. Just completely stopped dead. It's not doing nothing now. So that one will be up on the bench very soon. So the next one we got, let me go and get it. It's up here. Right, top of the garden. Here she be. So this is a commercial grade bit of kit. It's quite a heavy duty one and it's 22 inches long, which is weird for the UK. So these normally come from uh, New Zealand. But it's just 22 inches wide. I would say long, uh, wide. So um, this has got the Honda. Now, as I say, these two are both swapped in as part of a deal. 
Um, and this is the one I was interested in, because this would be the one that equivalently will make the money I was after for the, for the band model. But when I go to sell it, and that one on top, I should make good money. So this one, as far as I'm concerned, all runs. First pull. It doesn't like to idle, so that's something to look at. So it will idle there just but then stops. But I would like that to idle as it should do because um, it should, it's a Honda, it should idle right down low. Uh, you could just literally just muck with a tick over a, a touch, but these should idle on their own anyway. Um, there shouldn't be a problem. The driver works. I don't know what the oil is like, I don't know what the air filter is like, I've got no idea. But as I say, because I bought it as a going concern as part of a job lot, then I just want to go over it myself, sharpen the blade and what have you, have a quick little look at it before I put it up for sale. Once it's done, I can, I can then sell it and be happy with it. But the other one, that's waiting on parts. Right, here is the Mazport. Now, what's a couple of little things doing cosmetically to it? One is the, um, the little tiny Mazport sign is on the school with. So I think just a little tiny bit of um, aerodite on there and just literally just, just have it down. Yeah, just, just so it's where it needs to be, because it, no, it, it's just, so, as, I've always, as I've always said, the, the appearance of the machine is 99% of the sale, okay? You have to make sure these look nice. It has got a bit of wear on the wheel, so it has a bit of, a bit of higher, highish mileage, scraping on the tarmac, but this has been used commercially by, uh, by Scott, uh, so I would expect that anyway. And when uh, he showed me the mowers, I looked at the front wheels, and, and they are a bit bald. You can buy the wheels, but for what they are, it's not really worth doing. Um, I want to keep this as low as possible cost-wise, that's the idea. Uh, so first thing, let's have a quick look at what we're doing. Uh, air filter, I'm expecting it all to be good because it has been used commercially by a bloke who, who looks after his kit. So air filter looks pretty good. It's not too bad. It's got a little bit wet at times, uh, but it's not shocking, shocking, shocking. You can see it's got wet because there's a bit of mold in there. So it has, it has been used in the rain <coughs> once or twice. So we've got a brand spanking new air filter here for it. We'll put that in. So already the cost has gone up uh, to around about another three quid. So a brand new air filter is what's needed for this. I'm not going to put it in just yet, so I want to take this carburetor off, only because the machine is not quite idling as well as, well as it should do. Okay, so that, that, that's the reason why. Now, you may say, why, why not just adjust the tick over, Mick? Well, the machine should run absolutely A1 without having to adjust the idle on it. Um, we, by cleaning the carburetor and ruining out the jets, it should do it automatically. So I don't want to have to manipulate the machine to do it. Uh, so that's the reason why I'm doing that. Uh, let me grab my Dewalt drill impact. Now I've got a story about that. I've actually just had to take my take my um, battery up because I dropped it yesterday. Um, and I was mortified. I was upstairs changing a toilet seat because the toilet seat was broke, like they do. I went down to B&Q, grabbed the new toilet seat, 25 quid, come back, fitted that, and I had to screw it down, what have you. Coming back with me impact in the kitchen, I have a toilet, the old toilet seat, bag of bolts, cut of tools, you know, like you do. I dropped me impact and it cracked the battery right across the back, right across there, it's all broke. It still, still works, so still, still gonna, still gonna use it. But I dropped it and had a screwdriver bit in it and it went straight through my patio door. Smashed my brand new patio door, eight months old, straight through it. Mrs. P was not a very happy girly. Gonna remove the HTD because we are working it on an engine. Take that off, we don't want that to, to start up. I'm going to turn the petrol off as well whilst we're here. And I want to remove uh, the Honda, oh, there on there. Honda bolt. Now, lots of people don't like working on these Hondas because of, of, of the carburetor setup and the, and the amount of bolts and washers and bits and pieces that, that are involved in, um, in, the, in the setup of the machine. But I don't mind them. And people do use studs. I don't use studs. I just persevere with it. Um, I'm uh, well experienced in, in taking these Hondas apart, so it, it doesn't take that long. You can then remove the little tiny wire and then remove your um, crankcase breather tube off the back of the airbox if it comes off. I don't think it's been off for a while. Of course, it hasn't. It hasn't been off since day one, I think. So that comes off of there. Put that to one side. Let me just bring in for a bit of a closer look at it. I have been requested to, to do some a bit, a bit closer up work. 
So on here, you're gonna have your control panel, which is this front bit, the control panel plate, and maybe a gasket associated with the front of that just here, okay? So it goes gasket, control plate, gasket again, carburetor, heat shield, insulation block, okay? That's the orientation these come off. I will try and keep as many gaskets on there as I possibly can without splitting or breaking it any. So just very, very gently gonna come behind the back of this carburetor and just try and peel this gasket off without breaking it. I don't wanna be putting brand new gaskets on if I don't have to. It's either gonna stay on the carburetor or on the control panel. And at the moment, it's gonna be broken. So no drama, I can always make a new one up if need be. So that's that. So what we've got is uh, yeah, half it's half it stayed on the on the carby, half it's come off. So I'm going to take it all off because I'm going to make a new gasket up for that. That's part of the gasket, and the other part of the gasket is on the back of this control panel. But I don't think it's come off since day one. It's not it's not dirty dirty behind here, but uh, it's certainly uh, not the cleanest. We bear this control panel right out. Let's see what's going on. Come on, Mr. Gasket, play, play ball. There's a gasket. So now I have a complete gasket of which I can now make a make a, a copy of. That's no drama. I don't mind making gaskets up. Right. So now we've got our our carby. The heat shield's got to come off as well. That's that, that might want a bit of a spray of WD-40 on there just to help that come off. But this one here, uh, that's got to come off your choke. Now, lots of people fight with these to try and get them to come off. All you've got to do with these is remove the little tiny governor spring on the top of the governor. Hello, governor. Sausage party. Right. Let's uh, remove that spring on, if I, if I can get hold of it. I can get hold of that spring, it is. Come on, Mr. Spring. Right, off comes Mr. Spring. Ah, there it goes. Uh, and I've still got the fuel lead on there at the moment. I'm gonna try and remove that if I can very, very gently because uh, no doubt that will have a little tiny clip behind it. So with a pair of fuel lead pliers, I'm gonna get hold of that fuel lead, that fuel pipe, and just tease that off best I can without breaking it. There it goes. So there'll be a little tiny bit of fuel spillage, not a lot, because my fuel is turned off, okay. With that removed, what we can now do is now lift both arms up together, perpendicularly, and then tip the carburetor over, and then just take the carburetor straight off of its housing. Just like that. How easy was that? You ain't got to fight with it. So here's our carby. Now the main reason for the non-idling is that little tiny circuit just there. Um, could be a bit dirty birdie. So what we're going to do is just going to give it a quick little spray off, blow it off of an air compressor, and then uh, we will then uh, put it onto the bench and have a quick look in this carby. So I'm going to move this gasket very, 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 very carefully. I don't want that to break if I don't, if I don't help it. I don't want to put a new one of them on there, it's come off in one go. And because it come off that way, all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that up against the front so I know it went on like that. So we know, okay? Um, there's a little tiny hole just here which lines up with that hole just there. But if you remember this little tiny cutout, the, the, the big bit, that points upwards, that's how it went on. So it's not hard to, not hard to remember if you leave it just like so. So a quick little blow off on this carburetor, and then we'll put it onto a bench and have a quick little look at what that's doing. Uh, just check, make sure your throttle flap is moving as it should do, because that, that could be a reason why it wasn't idling as well, but that's free to move. So onto the bench, quick little clean up, and then uh, I'll come back to you very shortly. Right, so we're now, we're, we're now back. Um, the carburetor's been cleaned, and I have made myself a little tiny gasket using gasket paper and um, punches, special, special gasket punches. So now I line that up, that now will fit. It's a little bit bigger what it should be, but you know, it's, it's, it's gonna do the same job compared to um, it having no gasket at all. So that's good. So make sure there's no gasket on the back of this plate, which is not. I'm just gonna literally gonna put one of the mounting pins through, put the other one through, and all I wanna do literally just, is just mount the carby with a new gasket into its place, just so we don't lose that to begin with. Actually, what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna hook up my my throttle and what have you. Throttle and choke, that might be a better thing, Mick. Um, so I wanna put my throttle, just lay that in first, and then grab my choke, and lay my choke in as well at the same time. So lay them both in, make sure the rods are both in together, so we can then tip this carby back. So choke's in, but my throttle's not, not playing ball at the moment. So tip it back, back it goes. 
put your, your governor spring on, which goes for the next hole just on the back of the throttle flap, that's all now in place. So now that can just be dropped down ever so slightly. Let's let that hang there. Get me gasket. Mount that. Grab my carburetor rods, put one in. Put two in, that's it. So that all goes in together, that's nice. You wanna grab your uh, heat pad or heat pad stroke gasket. That's got to go on. It goes on. And then you then want to mount that through onto your carburetor bolt. So that's all roughly where you want it, okay? So that's how it's going to be. But we've got to then put the uh, the backing plate on uh, air box as well, okay? So that's how it all goes. So now holding it all together best we can. Now this is where people say, oh, just use a, use a stud, Mick. Yeah, I know, but I've, I've got it all together now. So I can remove the studs. It's all pressed together. I can then get hold of me, get hold of me, me air box, put, me, put one of my studs in the air box, and then push that through. Now, because it's all been pushed together, it just push in. Twist it around the right way. Oh, money fingers, that's it, ran the right way. Push that one in, and then get your, you have a rod. Push that one in, where's the ult? Uh, about there somewhere. See? Right, now is a time, push your rods through, but now's the time to hook up your air breather pipe, your crankcase breather pipe on the back of the air box, because the space is very, very limited behind here. So I'm just gonna sneak around the back and just gonna squeeze that on. Once that's in place, like it is now, you can push your rods all the way through, keep an eye on that air breather pipe, make sure it doesn't come off, and then mount your carburetor onto its position. Push the whole thing forward, and then just loosely do up those little tiny bolts by hand. And that's it, so it, to, to me, People really lose their rag and oh, use their stud bar. Yeah, okay, well, I don't have to, and I've just proven to you. It takes about ten seconds more, and you know, I'm, I'm in no rush in life, you know, so I'm happy. Um, so we're gonna nick them down, put them down together. Just on the number one setting, so I'm not impacting. We're just nicking it up. Once it's where it needs to be, I click onto number two setting, and then just give it a little tiny impact just to make sure it's all on. You've got a little tiny wire up here, which needs to sit just underneath the air box, just there. We're happy with that. Uh, crankcase breather's in place. And then when I grab that 10 mil spanner, I, what I said about earlier on, uh, 10 mil, which is that one. Oh, come here. So I'll go underneath this carby and just nick up that little tiny 10 mil like I said I would. Not too tight, because you'll snap it. About there. And that's that, so I'm happy with that. That's that done. Now I want to double check is it's actually choking right. So at the moment, the machine is on full throttle. Just want to set it to choke all the way forward and double check the machine is actually choking right, which it is. We can tell it just because the, the flap is moving. Let me show you. So down in here, you'll see the little tiny uh, throttle flap. When I now activate the choke, if I can reach it, you can then see it activates the choke. It closes the flap up. You see that? There's choke there's full throttle, okay? So make sure it's doing that. If it's not doing that, you need to adjust it here. Put it onto choke here, up this end, set it to choke, undo this screw and pull this cable back. And then that will then close that flap up and then do that little tiny screw back up. Okay, got some little bit of aerodite here, just to mix up. A bit of grass in there as well, for good measure. Uh, grass out, if I can get grass out, not grass in there. That's it, all right. It's a little bit of aerodite. This is a rapid stuff. Mix that up. This is a 50-50 mix. And just all I want to do is just put a little tiny bit of that on the back of this sign. Just going to lift it up. I'll put a little tiny bit on there first, just to hold it. And just a little bit on there. All the way down. Lift it up. Put it roughly in place. Gonna be about there. I'm happy with that. Get rid of my aerodite. And the old bin. 
a little tiny wipe off whilst holding it in place. That's why I've just overlapped and just spilt a little tiny bit of it. So it's nice and level, Mick. It's going to be about there. And that can then just sit there whilst I'm working on the machine. And by tomorrow, that'll be as hard as nails. I ain't going nowhere. So, as I say, the appearance is 99% of, uh, of the sale. Let me double check that oil, see how that's getting on. I'll be back to you. All right, let's check that oil. Where is the Dippus Basticus? <coughs> that's over here. All right. So, dipstick. Dip it and test. Uh, oh, we're just a little tiny bit low. We are, we are a, a mini vanilla. We are just literally a smidgen. A smidgen is just a little bit more than a tad. So I don't want a tad or a smidgen. That should be plenty. Oh, no, that, that'd be plenty. So that's the oil now topped off. Uh, the last thing I believe I've got to do, it will be um, the blade. And the blades on these are a little bit unique. They're not your standard blade that you, uh, that you all know and love. They're a little bit different. I will check that all once I've tipped the machine back down onto its bum. Uh, the blade's got like a, a bit like a, bu like, like a bush cutting blade on here. It's a two system blade. Let me get the machine tipped back slightly because I have you know, filled it up with oil, but uh, let me get it tipped backwards and I'll come back. Okie bidokie. So here's the blade system, as you can see. It's really clean under here. I have jet washed it all off. These little tiny blades, they do, they do rotate to a degree. Um, they, they are designed that if you hit anything um, on the outside of outside of the system, they are designed so that they uh, it, it, it protects your crankshaft. It's a brilliant system, absolutely fantastic system, um, and it, it stops you getting bent blades or, or bent crankshafts. So that's pretty good. To remove this, they are, they're not too bad. It's a bit a bit of cleaning up. I just want to remove um, this centre uh, bolt here, which should be a fourteen. I think I've got an impact just down by you guys. Oh. Don't forget the HT has been removed. Is it a 14? Yeah, it is. Make sure it's going anti, anti clockwise. Yeah. Grab hold, grab hold of a blade and drop that down. That comes off a of blade boss. And there's your blade. Now, as I, as I tell you, it's just, it's just a, a very small blade on here. That's all they are. Um, they're not designed to go all the way around, okay? Look. look. Like a, like a haterette blade does. They're not designed to do that. They're just designed uh, to be loose. So these will always be loosened off slightly. They are designed to move a little tiny bit. Um, all I've got to do is just, is just give these blades a bit of a tiffle up. They're not too bad, a bit of damage, but you'd expect that with that use it's had. Let me get them tiffled up with my brand spanking new um, Dewalt um, grinder that Mrs. P gave me for my birthday. Absolutely love it. And Mrs. P bought me a brand spanking new uh, Dewalt um, uh, grinder, uh, cordless, so now I can now uh, do it hands-free, so to speak. What I'm looking to do is do all my grinding outside due to fire risks. Um, I'm going to get a vice outside and uh, grind all my blades outside uh, rather than doing it in my Wendy house near my neck curtains, uh, Mr. Project Man. So let me get that ground. I'll be back to you in two ticks. Okay, that's the uh, the the uh, blade now been sharpened, um, very nice indeed, and doled off on the back as well, and that's on both sides. So I just ground it off by hand. Could do a bit more just there, actually. I might go back and do that. Um, and then uh, off the back as well. So yeah, I'm just gonna put another little edge on there. It's got a little tiny hollow in there, which I don't like. Let me get that done and get the blade refitted. Okay, that's the blade now, it's been tickled back up again. Um, all I'm gonna do now is just get me a, get my blade boss, and it'll only go on one way, uh, which is of course the right way up. It just goes up like that. Get your bolt. Start it off first. Just get him spinning. Once he's on, push it into place. Again, the HT has been removed, so there's no there's no fear of this machine starting the fire. Impact it on. I like to put mine on nice and tight. You don't want the blade coming off on anything. On these. So that's good. Happy with that. And, and they're free to spin and do what we want to do. So that's good. Happy with that. Let's tip the mower back onto its wheels and roller. Tip that down. Mrs. P's just walked in, guys. She's just been shopping. Oh, hi, Mrs. P. There she hi. is, there. Yeah. There she is. She, she's been shopping. All right, baby. Mm -hmm. you? Yeah, I'm good, babe. Just doing this video on this um, nice little Maz port. Yes, very nice indeed. Okay, so, um, so far, spark plug done, carburetor cleaned, uh, pull cord's fine, always been topped up, blade's been sharpened and balanced. Uh, little signs have been stuck on, 
All I want to do now is undo these three screws. One, two, three, which I've already sort of undone. Just want to pull the side panel off. This is where all your cabling goes goes forward. Just drop that big screw, I don't want to lose that. Uh, towards your gearbox and all, all, all your belt assembly. And there's a big guard here, and my suspicion is it's going to be going to be, have some grass behind here. Um, a little bird nest. This is where your gearbox is all hidden in here, and your chain. Um, all that sort of good yummy stuff. Now, you know, as, as going through for a service, like I say, look at all that, all that grass there. So that grass there, that will actually affect the um, the drive itself because that grass will get behind the belt. So every two or three months, you know, get behind here with a screwdriver and a, and, a, and a compressor and just knock all this stuff out. Because it will, it will get behind that gearbox, as I say, and it will affect the drive. So just take that out. Once you've got the bulk of it out, let me leave it else behind. You can get right behind here too if you want to. Just gonna get a torch and just have a little tiny sneaky papiki um, in there. I'll do it with my torch mix. I don't know. I haven't seen my torch for weeks. There it is. Um, oh, sorry, I've, got, I've got one in from my mate up in, up in Crawley. He sent me this one, didn't he? I'll use that one. A little tiny sneaky peek. Uh, there's a little bit of grass up in there. I can see it. So I'm not going to deny it. I need to get up in there because you've got all pulleys up in here, okay? Um, and what have you? And there's grass all up on the top of the gearbox up here as well. There's grass everywhere. So I'm going to remove this this top panel. I don't know how hard that's going to be. Let's have a little look. Uh, it could just be that one bolt there, or one bolt down the side there as well. So it's going to look like two two ten mils potentially. And we could then let me swing you around so you get a bit more of a better view. Two seconds. There you go. Right, so to remove this, I believe, I haven't worked on these before. I've worked on a few mass ports, but that's a lie, but not, not this type of one. I'm gonna undo this gearbox housing. I'm hoping all these bolts are all captive. There's one right on the far side of the engine, right down in the deepest, darkest depths down here, if I can get to it. I want you to get a big extension bar, a big boy. Let's get a big boy out. Let's get a big boy out. Sausage party. Um, Let's get a big boy out. There we go, the size of that weapon. All right, let's put that in there. All the way down the side here somewhere. There's another There's another 10 mil down there somewhere. There it is. I believe. That feels like it's spinning to me. Yeah, it is. Where is that spinning? Yeah, it is. You mother. Uh, we'll sort that out. Um, let me tip that back a bit. Mind, your, mind the camera, boys. Let me tip that back oh, under there. That's it, I'll hold it, I think. Oh, there's a bolt down here somewhere, guys, and it's spinning. There is it. It could be, it's gonna be, I think it's that one up there, guys. I think it's that cookie, that one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin that, whilst holding it with my hand, just to see, yeah, it's that one there. Okay, so we now know, we gotta get, you gotta get a 10 mil spanner, and a socket, put it onto there, and that's what goes onto that one there. Please don't snap on me, baby. No, it didn't. Oh, I got my nut, yeah, got my nut, that's good. Let's withdraw my impact, my bolts come off with it. So that's a little bolt that goes onto the uh, far side, and a longer bolt goes onto the one nearer the gearbox. Um, let's drop that back over now. Oh, that's it. Right, so now, God willing, I can now remove this entire metal casing. Come on, baby. There it goes. Right, so that's now removed that entire casing. What year is this? I think it's about 2012, I think he says it was. Uh, comes from New Zealand. I'd love to go there. Uh, yeah, I think it's 2012, I think he said. Um, so up in here now, you can see, let me bring up there so you can see what's going on. Bit of that, bit of that. You can now see inside here. And you've got all this stuff here, all this grass, wet grass, stuck behind yay pulleys. And that's the stuff that will make your pulleys seize on you if you don't clean all that out. All right, so that's all got to come out. And half of it, you can just pull out of an air compressor. And then you've also got, let me get a screwdriver up. You got grass up behind this gearbox as well. Look, all there. That's all that come out. 
all down in behind here. We've got grass absolutely everywhere. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my air compressor. I'm just going to blow all that out. Okay, because that will affect the drive. Guarantee you. So let me get it all blown out, and uh, I'll come back to you in two ticks. Hang on, two, two seconds, mate. Right, uh, that's what I've blown off, right, and all looking good. Now, on these Maz ports, there is a little tiny adjust here. So if your drive is a little tiny bit sloppy, if this chain does look a bit loose, right, but in all fairness, it's not actually breaching off of the back of these cogs. But what you can do is, you can get a little tiny spanier up in the there, right, like that, it should be a 13, I think. And then you can then spin this um, this nut. That'll undo, right? Like that. And then you've got an adjuster on here, which will take take the slack up. Okay. So if you if you find that when you first get it, your your, your chain's really really sloppy, you can then just move it up to like there. That'll tighten the chain right up. Okay. Still a bit a bit of movement here. This chain could possibly do with changing. To be fair. But if you find yourself that your, your drive's a bit slack, like, like it would be there, for instance, you know, that's really slack. If I take the slack up, that's, that's tightened up a, a lot. Um, you can get a bit of a roll as well, just, just so you get the right angle, but angle. Tighten it up, and then put it like that. Put your, your spanner back on. It's a bit, it's a bit cack handed your camera's right in the way, as usual. Because you guys all complain when I don't show you close up stuff. Get that spanner in place. Two seconds, guys and girls. Hold that in place like that, and then nick that up like so, nice and tight. And that is now your chain tension. So you get a bit, you've got you've got a bit of adjustment there, and that and that will give you a lot more a lot more positive drive. This was a little bit slow to react at, um, initially. It wasn't a lot, but just a, it, it's been adjusted by about three or four mil. But that makes all the difference, okay? Just make sure that your chain does actually slide, okay, which, it's, which it should do. <clears throat> and that's all, that, that's all replaceable. So you have got a chain adjuster there as well. So if you wanted to adjust your chain, then that part of the video was just for you. Right, with that chain now uh, adjusted, um, I'm gonna get some oil. Controversial here, do you grease chains or oil chains? Mmm, what came first, the, the chicken or the egg? Some people say you grease chains, some people say you oil chains, okay? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it's dependent, okay, on the type of machine, what time of year you're, you're using the machine, because a lot of grease does actually go quite solid during uh, the winter season, okay? You've got to remember this is a moving part as well, so you may also want some kind of high temperature grease because of the bearings and fittings, so you may want to do that. So in my opinion, it is subjective, okay? In the comment section, let me know what you guys should think I should do. Should I oil this or should I grease it? But I'm gonna oil it, okay? I'm gonna oil it with some decent penetrating um, uh, all-purpose maintenance oil, okay? Because on a bike, right, on a mountain bike, you don't grease a mountain bike chain, do you? No, you don't, you oil it, okay? I've always, I was always told by my old French mate, Andre Buller, who taught me how to work on machinery, is that you grease chains, uh, you, you oil chains and you grease sprockets and bearings, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna oil it, but put in the comment section what you guys think. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on these pulleys as well, because there are little tiny bearings inside there as well, okay? And there's no grease nipples there. Um, now to my knowledge, there is no grease nipples on this machine, right, anywhere, okay? I haven't seen any. Uh, not that I particularly look very hard for them, but I haven't seen any at all. There's another chain behind here as well, so I'm just going to remove these two um, and just pull that back and then just run some grease behind there as well. So there's another chain just behind there, guys. Uh, make sure you do that. But that's my opinion. I only I will oil chains and uh, grease the sprockets up, but I would, if this was my machine, take those three bolts off every three months and just re-oil it. That's me. Okay, if you're going to grease them, you potentially, grease tends to hang onto a lot of, lot of debris and stuff, okay? Um, and because this is an area where there's lots of grass getting in here, you grease all this up, uh, the grass will um, stick to the grease more than it will be oil. That's my theory. Put it in the comment section what you guys and girls think. Okay, that's all now been um, oiled, not greased. Um, that's my opinion. I'm now gonna put this cover back on, which has all been cleaned. I've oiled the chain behind as well. That's all done. So now I'm gonna try and fit this back in without uh, damaging anything. Mine at governor arm there, Mick, you want me 
hitting that old governor. It's a bit of a pickle, but once it goes, it sort of sits in place, you know, you know where you are. That's gone down. There's a little tiny cable here, which has got to sit inside a grommet. So you know when it's down, when that grommet then lines up and that goes back in to stop some of the grass going in, like so. We like it. That's good. Now we've got two bolts here. Uh, the longer bolt is the one that goes uh, through this top, what I believe I said. That goes into there, like that. And then the shorter bolt goes right over the far side, down through that hole down in there. I'll wiggle it about a bit to make sure it all lines up. It's going to be about there. I can see the hole where it is there. I'm going to tip the mower, the mower back onto its roller. Bearing in mind, this mower is full of oil, but at no point have I tipped onto its side. It's just been tipped back, okay? Bring you guys back out of the way a touch. Just drop me down so you get a better look at it. I don't know if you guys complain, you can't, you can't see nothing. Have a go at me. I'll just bring that light down for you as well. As you only start kicking off it, you can't see nothing. Let's try that. There you go, a bit more light for you. I can then get my 10 mil nut. Whilst hanging onto a bolt, put the 10 mil nut on. Onto there, I'm gonna grab my 10 mil spanner, uh, 10 mil, and I'll grab my extension bar. I'll go onto that nut at the back here, which is about there. Make sure it's doing up. And then, nick that, hasn't got to be tight. Just got to be done up. That goes back onto there. Take the mower back onto its roller. Lovely job. I'm gonna bring you guys back in. Yeah, ringside seats, there you go. Uh, I can then do up um, that 10 mil there. That sits all that down. Now, so make sure it's not gonna impinge on nothing. It needs to be all the way down, which is about there. I'm happy with that. That cable's got to sit in there, Mick. I'm happy, I'm gonna get my guard, which is on my cover. Make sure there's no grass on the, uh, on the inside of that. A little bit just there, get rid of that. And then that cover then sits, there's a bolt hole there for it. It all, all goes in together and all sits down together and goes over top of all that. It's all, it's all covered up. Something. Oh, no. Get on it, that's it. Something like that, and then that bolt there goes into there. And these are little tiny Phillips on here, people. I'm gonna to struggle to get that in the hole initially. Let me grab my Phillips screwdriver, one-handed. <laughs> Any Phillips will do, Mick. It's always the same, you can never find a Phillips you want. We had a minute ago. Start that one off. I think that's got him. And come around this side. Where's that one? That's down a bit. There it goes. That's that one. I've got one more down the bottom here to do as well. And that's a cover. So now, now, I'm, now I'm conscious about, I know behind there is clean. Uh, so many people wouldn't, wouldn't even bother entertaining that. Oh, it's running fine, get it out. Get a bit of a clean, have a bit of pride in your work. That way, you can, that way, when you go to sell it on, you know it's clean. If the drive does pack up, then you know it's something else other than grass up in there, okay? And that's all in there. That's gone in lovely. Happy with that. All three wheels, as it should do, so that's good. So we're nearly there now, I think. Um, I think we're now in a position where we can now actually get just one good final clean off, tidy it up, take it outside, give it a run, and see if now the machine now will idle on its own. It may want a bit more adjustment work here. I don't think it will do. Um, a bit of a tidy up, and I'll meet you outside. Okay, so here is uh, Mazport number one, which is the 22 inch with the GCV 160 Honda engine on top. Had a bit of a clean up, a bit of a lacquer. It looks nice, um, so therefore should should sell well as well. So all the height control all works on the machine as it should do. No, no, nothing is, uh, is, is broken. And it's had new spark plug, new air filter. Uh, all's been topped up, the all was very, very good. Uh, it's had the chains oiled and uh, pulleys all oiled up. The chain has been tensioned, blade sharpened and balanced. Um, the pull cord was fine. I just leave the pull cord alone. 
uh, that's absolutely no problem at all. So apart from that, everything's been done. And the first part of this video, when you, might, when you saw it first come out, it wouldn't idle. I'm hoping it will do now. If not, I may have to adjust the carburetor, but I'm hoping with a carburetor clean that it's had on top, uh, it will now idle as a Honda should do anyway. So let's onto choke dead man in and I want to see if it'll run and then see if it actually idle down as it should do as well. So first pull, off a choke. Drives a lot more responsive now. The hide lit down. Look at that. It wants just picking up, just a touch, just a feather. That's all the way back, as far as it go. Can't get more than that. But that is just border lining it. <clears throat> so don't forget, I did take out the, um, the idle screw as well. And uh, they may not be enough, but that just goes to prove with a carburetor clean, it will idle, but I did remove that idle screw. Let me get a little Phillips. It's going to be quite a long one. I don't want to take the air box off to do this. So let me grab a, a very, very long uh, Phillips screwdriver, which someone actually gave me off my old Amazonian wishes. I've got some 14-inch some screwdrivers, sausage party, um, of which I can now uh, get up in behind here with ease. So I'm going to start the lawnmower up. Okay but I want it to be uh, slowing down. Slight, a bit of choke maybe. And look at that. I'm gonna get a little clamp so it keeps the engine running. Now you have to do this really with a machine running. So if you're gonna do this, just be careful guys. Don't put your fingers underneath that deck because you're in for a bit of a surprise if you do. Just be mindful. So it's just above tick over, okay? Just above it. So now I'm going to go in, find the screw. And then adjust it. So now I know that's gone too far. So back in again, and now I can drop it down. Something like that. Yeah, that's good. Ticking over. Ticking over, like a Honda should. Okay, so that's that um, nice big 22 inch mass port now fully serviced, up and running, doing exactly what it should do. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to now sew up machine knowing that everything has been done. 
Um, it's passed its test already because the machine was fully running when I picked it up. There was no issues with the machine. Uh, just done a few hours on the old clock for a commercial machine, but there's still, there's still plenty of hours left in there because the machine's been well looked after and it's not making any silly noises, not doing anything it shouldn't do. So I'm super happy with that machine. I'm very confident that machine when I go on to sell and I should earn a very, very good penny. And more importantly, um, service someone uh, for the next couple of seasons coming forward and uh, should, should earn them a few quid as well. So everyone gets something out of it. So super, super happy. It is actually a great little machine too. Um, so that's done and done. If you like sort of video of Mixed Murders and Murder Man, hit your subscribe button and whack the old bell. Set notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I look forward to this episode of Mixed Murders very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy.